I tell you what, I absolutely hate January. It is so depressing and I know I'm not alone in that. So what can we do about it? Well, personally, I like to jump into the whole New Year resolutions and goal setting vibe. It may be arbitrary, it may invite almost instant failure, but it also stops me from having a breakdown for the first couple of months of the year, so welcome to my goal setting video for 2023. I guess a sensible place to start then would be with last year's goals. Last New Year I'd had this channel for I think about six months and I was really starting to feel the pressure that comes with needing to keep putting out videos and therefore also needing to do enough craft projects to have things to make videos about. So in January I set myself what I was calling my intentional crafting challenge, which was basically a set of guidelines or goals for myself to kind of remind me what sort of projects I actually enjoy and what my priorities are in crafting, to take focus off just churning things out for videos. Honestly, I'm just gonna say it now, this worked a treat. Yeah, I still got stressed last year, yes there were still a couple of craft fails, but the self-hate levels went way down and that is definitely a win. So let's have a look at what those goals were and see how I got on. The first thing was that I banned myself from joining mystery stitch alongs and also said that I would join other stitch alongs sparingly. Check! There were only three something alongs that I joined in the entire year and two of those were actually hosted by myself so they barely even count. First up was the cozy along this time last year which was basically just a few of us on Instagram making projects that made us feel cozy to help quiet the existential void that calls to us all at this time of year. I also co-ran the Satsuma start along much later in the year which as it sounds like was just a ton of us starting Satsuma street cross stitch patterns together. So the only stitch along I joined from someone else was the Peppermint Purple Year of Blackwork Sal, which I did this in 2020 and then I skipped it in 2021 and really missed it so I decided to join again last year. Unfortunately this time I didn't quite manage to keep up so I'm just going to keep working on that in the new year because I really enjoy how it's working out and there's no rush, right? I have to say I did not really miss stitch alongs at all. I still love watching other people work on them but no they are not for me and after a whole year of skipping them I don't think I'll ever go back. Goal achieved! Number two was to cross stitch for the process and not the result. I definitely did embrace this mindset a lot more in 2022. I stopped worrying so much about finishing things or whether the designs that I wanted to stitch would go in our house and just focused on enjoying the mindless relaxation of it, especially with my full coverage piece Autumn Stories. It's fair to say progress on that has been really slow but I've thoroughly enjoyed it and that is what matters. Honestly this approach feels really good although I do admit it makes for less exciting YouTube content so maybe I need to find more of a balance there. I don't know. Anyway this attitude is pretty bedded in by now so I'm gonna call that one goal complete too. Make mostly clothes and other practical items. This is a big check. I'm struggling to even think of anything off the top of my head that I made last year that wasn't practical in some way. I suppose there were those Halloween decorations that serve no purpose other than looking spooky but even that is practicality of a sort. There were no toys apart from Rudy who was made from a gifted craft kit and I will hear no bad words about. Obviously most of my cross stitch projects aren't going to be super practical but that's just the nature of that craft and also thanks to stitching for the process I'm hardly finishing anything anyway. <laughs> This was an intention that I set down because I know that practical items is really where my heart lies with crafting. So really it served as a reminder if I found my eyes wandering to a project that deep down I knew I wouldn't really enjoy. Big success. Moving on. I wanted to start working towards a me made capsule wardrobe. Obviously that's a pretty big goal so I did break it down further. I wanted to stick to a specific colour palette. I wanted to make easy to wear items, things that weren't overly fussy or lacy or get caught on door handles. I wanted to make mostly one piece outfits like dresses for example because I'm really lazy with getting dressed. And of course the biggie, no more shawls. This goal definitely saw a lot of progress last year. Almost everything I made stuck to that colour scheme with the exception of socks because as I said last year socks are where you can go wild and nobody notices. Oh and also with the exception of that swancho I made but in fairness the yarn for that was bought before new year so that wasn't really my fault. Also side note I really do need to pick up the extra yarn to finish off the tassels on that thing. It looks weird. Obviously a whole wardrobe is a big project and there are loads more things I want to make so this goal is rolling over into the new year. But I am definitely happy with my progress so far so more of that this year please. One slightly unusual one that I set last year was a £30 maximum budget for most projects. So 
I set this intention not necessarily as a hard and fast rule, but basically to try and stop myself from feeling guilty about not being able to afford the fancy projects I was seeing other people do. I've stuck to this one really without thinking because it's more out of necessity than anything else. But I do think having it on the list made me feel better about the whole thing. <laughs> I stopped even thinking about really big or expensive projects, at least for the time being, and anything along those lines that does pop into my head, I just stick it on a list in Notion against the day that I have a load of spare cash. This rule also helped a lot with my quest to become less terrified of sewing, because fabric costs can really add up on a project, and the more I've spent, the more scared I am that I'm going to mess it up and ruin everything. Sticking to cheap or thrifted fabrics meant that that pressure was completely gone, and I could just get on with learning to sew. Hmm. Focus on projects I already own the stuff for. This is probably the one that everyone scoffed at the most, and I admit it is the one I've struggled with the most. In my defence though, I wanted to make good progress learning to sew, and as a beginner you just don't have the stash, so what am I supposed to do? Sew things out of thin air? You need fabric! I did use up all my old air dry clay, I found uses for old jewellery findings from other projects, and I made very slow but steady progress through my sock yarn stash too. All good things. But of course I also treated myself to a load of new yarn for my winter projects, and I spent what is for me quite a lot of money rejigging my craft room, so um, yeah, this one's a bit of a fail. It is something I want to keep working on though, because my yarn stash especially is full of bits and pieces that don't go with the capsule wardrobe colours, so I really need to come up with an alternative plan for those. Maybe there's a video idea in there somewhere, I don't know. We'll see. Incorporate custom art. This is the sort of goal you can only set for yourself in January, when you are full of the childlike optimism of New Year. <laughs> to be fair, at the time I joined an Instagram art challenge that was going well, and I was working my way through a Skillshare class that someone had recommended to me, and I was learning a ton. I'd also just come off of making these air dry clay balls, which I designed and 3D printed the stamp for. So since that project went well and I was learning so much all the time, I was a bit gung-ho about bringing my blossoming art skills into new projects. There's just one problem with that that quickly became apparent. I'm kind of bad at art. And I know I spend so much of my time on this channel telling people they can do any creative endeavour they put their minds to, and I stand by that. It is true. But it turns out that while I would love to be the sort of person who can draw, it's just not that important to me to prioritise. I wasn't making time to practise, and it just sort of fizzled out. So this is something I enjoyed, and it's something that will come up now and again in new projects. But I'm taking it off the official goals list because it turns out it's just not that important to me. This is how we learn. So looking at how last year went, that's two things we can immediately add to the 2023 list. First, continue working on that capsule wardrobe. I am going to make a small change to the colour palette though. Basically, I'm allowing red. This was the one colour I was so sure last year that I did not want in my wardrobe, but it turns out I based that entirely off of one awful blindingly bright top that I used to own, and that's not really fair to all the other shades of red. <laughs> Of course, it doesn't really go with a lot of the other colours in my palette, but given my bias towards black and my desire for one-piece outfits, I think it'll be just fine. Welcome back, Red. You are officially unbanned. Second rollover goal is to focus on projects I already own the stuff for. Yes, I am just straight up attempting this one again. Even while thinking about these goals and planning this video, I've already had a couple of ideas, so I just need to set some time aside to think about that properly, I think. And finally, the new goals. This year I want to go on a cross-stitch finishing spree. As much as stitching for the process has been great, I still have ended up with a very, very slowly but surely growing pile of finished things that just sort of waste away on a shelf. They deserve better. I've been quietly planning what I could do with each of the ones that I really like, and this is the year. I can hear you muttering, yeah, right, but look, it's on the official goals list, it's gonna happen. Find my cross-stitch design style. You probably know I've potted around with some simple cross-stitch designs in the past, but the problem has always been that inherent lack of artistic skill. That said, when I was trying to learn to draw last year, I did learn a lot about finding your style as an illustrator, and I think a lot of those lessons would transfer over well to the cross-stitch design world. Again, this is the sort of thing that you have to make time for and commit to, so this is me doing exactly that, and we'll see how it goes. Thrift more fabrics for cheaper sewing projects. My naturally frugal nature meant sticking to the £30 budget last year was pretty easy, but I can do better. 
Even though our local charity shops aren't the best, I have had a few scores from them recently and I think maybe I just need to make the time to visit more often and give myself more of a chance to find the cool stuff. So I'm sure Dave will be very happy to hear that we're doing that on at least a monthly basis from now on. Put together a mini capsule wardrobe for a fancy cruise. Yep, we are going on a cruise this year. It's not something I've ever done before, it's not something I could ever afford, but a family member is very generously paying for a few of us to go away and I am so excited. A fancy cruise has literally been on my bucket list since I was a kid. But you can't go on a fancy cruise without floaty maxi dresses and crocheted cover-ups, right? My rough plan is to swan around the ship in said floaty maxi dresses and crocheted cover-ups and get some good cross-stitching done while looking out to sea, watching for any Poseidon adventure type situations. Get into macrame. This is something I thought a lot about towards the end of last year, partially because you can just make such pretty things, but also because a lot of those things are very practical. As luck would have it, this is the craft that Dave decided to gift me for Christmas. So excellent gifting intuition there, I have to say, and I am really looking forward to getting stuck into this kit. And one last goal is to get back on the sock horse. For all I talk about how great knitted socks are and how great a travel project they are, I did barely any sock knitting last year. That will not do. I've got at least two partially knitted pairs that I can finish off, and I also have a sock construction video tutorial coming out in the next few weeks, which I filmed last year, but I just haven't had a chance to edit it together yet, so apologies if you were waiting on that one. If anyone out there is planning to start knitting socks this year, well, maybe that'll be helpful, so keep an eye out. All right, so I make that um, eight goals, and last year was only seven, and I still failed at some of those, so... Hmm... If nothing else, I am profoundly incapable of giving up on making all the things. So we'll just see how that goes. <laughs> now you know my goals for 2023, please share yours down in the comments. Do you have rollover goals from last year like I do? Or are you annoyingly on top of everything and starting on a whole new list this year? Or maybe you don't even have a list and you think this whole thing is pretty weird, in which case, yeah, fair enough. Maybe you're planning to learn a whole new craft this year, in which case, ooh, <laughs> exciting. And also if it's macrame, let's compare notes. Okay, enough of this. Thanks for watching right until the very end, and as your reward, here is a sneaky goal nine. This year, I also plan to make my own wedding dress. All right, I'll be back soon with some more crafty nonsense, so in the meantime, have a brilliant rest of your day and keep making cool stuff.